Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to take a look at domain and range. So when we're considering a relation, remember that relations also include functions, the first element in the ordered pair, often called the x value, sometimes called the input, if we took all of those x values or all of those inputs, they form a set that we call the domain. So the domain is a set of all possible inputs. The second element, or sometimes called the y values, sometimes called the outputs, if we took all of those possible values, that would form a set called the range. So oftentimes with relations or with functions, we're interested in listing out or expressing the domain and the range, all the possible inputs and all the possible outputs. So here we're gonna take a look at how can we do that from our values given to us in a table format. So again, domain comes from inputs. When we list, in this case, when our inputs are month numbers, we look and say, okay, what are the possible values that we can use as inputs? Since we have 1 through 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, those are distinct values, then I'm just going to list them with a little curly bracket and then a list separated by commas. So my list of all possible outcomes for month numbers are the values 1 through 12. When it comes to my range, that is the list of all possible output values. So when I look, I have a lot of repeating values here for month numbers, because most of our months have either 30 or 31 days in them, with the exception of February. So I want to list these out, but when I get to a repeated value, I don't need to list it again. It only needs to be in my list one time. So I'm going to take and check, just going in order, when I get a value that I don't have listed, I'm going to go ahead and list it. So for January, I have 31. February, 28, I don't have that one yet, so I'll go ahead and list it. March has 31 days. I already have 31, so I'm going to go ahead and move to the next one. April has 30 days. I don't have that one listed, so I'm going to go ahead and list it. Checking the rest, I have 31, 30, 31, 31, 30, 31, 30, and 31, all of which I already have listed. So my list of possible outcome or output values is 31, 28, and 30. Okay, so let's check another example. Once again, we have our values in our relation given to us in a table. So for our domain, we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to list out all of the x values, leaving off anything that repeats. So uh, going in, I have 0 as an x value, 3, 4, and 8. And then I have 3 again, but since it's already listed, I don't need to list it again. So that is all of my possible input or x values. Doing the same thing for range, I'm going to go through and list all the values. If something is repeated, I'm only going to list it once. So negative 2 is a possible y value. 1, 6, 9, and 1 I already have in my list, so I won't list it again. So my range, or my possible output values, are negative 2, 1, 6, and nine. All right, guys, that does it for this video on domain and range introduction and from a table. We'll catch you in a future video.